Britain's AstraZeneca wants to combine its COVID-19 vaccine with Russia's Sputnik V. A Russian scientists have suggested this will boost the efficacy of the vaccine. Developers of the Sputnik V vaccine approached AstraZeneca via Twitter last month. Clinical trials could start by the end of the year. And Kirill Dmitriev is the CEO of the Russian Direct Investment Fund, which has funded Sputnik V. He joins us live from Moscow. Mr. Dmitriev, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, firstly, what's the reason uh, for this tie-up with AstraZeneca, particularly as both vaccines are already being rolled out? Traditionally, big pharma companies are usually fairly protective of their products. Well, I think it's very important that we work to fight with COVID together. And I think this is a very important example of international cooperation, real international cooperation. And frankly, we need to have more of those examples, not competition among vaccine producers, but really cooperation. Uh, and basically, a part of Sputnik V vaccine is the approach we pioneered, which is using two different vectors to deliver the spike of coronavirus. And our scientists believe that having two different vectors brings better efficiency than just using one vector to do two shots. And AstraZeneca confirms that they would like to have clinical trials with us to try this approach out, to see the results. Uh, and we do believe it will lead to higher efficacy uh, of the vaccine when you use two different vectors, which is part of Sputnik V approach, rather than using the same vector twice that most other uh, pharma companies are doing right now. Uh, well, it, it sounds like uh, it's a very science and research driven approach to the collaboration. But is there also uh, a financial upside for Russia? And what exactly, how transparent will this collaboration be? Well, I think, again, it's all subject to clinical trials and we are still at the very early stages of this. And we will discuss all of the other possible ways of collaboration later. But I think it is very important that we can really defeat this pandemic together. We believe that AstraZeneca has very solid technology. Uh, we obviously believe Sputnik V has very solid technology. There have been lots of, you know, disinformation attacks and media attacks against Sputnik V, which we find very unfortunate and frankly, very unethical. But I think this is a testament that many people believe that our technology is top notch and Russia is open to partner and share its technology with other nations not only to partner on giving part of our shot to other vaccines, but also we are partnering with other nations to manufacture our vaccine there to have technology transfer there. So I think it's a very positive example of cooperation. And we hope that more vaccines do that because the question also of vaccine compatibility is very important. What if somebody gets one vaccine one year and another vaccine next year? I think those are all of the things that need to be tested out so this is a very important project for other vaccine makers as well to consider. It's been almost a week since Russia began its own mass vaccination program. Can you tell us a bit about how the take up rate has been like? So we already vaccinated more than 150,000 people outside of uh, clinical trials. Uh, and we believe that's important that Russia and other nations have started massive vaccinations. We expect to vaccinate you know, a large number of people already in December. The focus is on high-risk groups, those are doctors and teachers, people who really have very high risk of COVID. So the vaccination is going well. And you know, I myself got vaccinated, my wife got vaccinated. We have very high level of antibodies. And we believe Russian vaccine has really worked very well. And people understand it based on human and viral vector approach that has been tested for decades. So we believe it's one of the safest platforms out there with efficacy more than 90 percent, with good price and ability to store the vaccine at plus two, plus eight degree temperature. Well, that's indeed a high efficacy rate uh, that you've mentioned there. But still, Sputnik V is struggling with uh, skepticism surrounding its uh, product, especially from the West. Um, do you see then this tie up with AstraZeneca as a way to sort of mitigate this? Well, again, we are focused on saving people in Russia. We are focused on saving people in Argentina. Uh, yesterday, President of Argentina announced that he is buying 10 million doses of Sputnik for Argentina. I think there's lots of uh, misunderstandings, uh, you know, from some of the Western press. Frankly, there is lots of unethical attacks for competitive reasons on Russian vaccine. But the key is that we have a very good product. It's very well researched. You know, we had clinical trials already. Uh, you know, 25,000 people have participated in phase three clinical trials in Russia. 
So frankly, we will have more tie-ups with other uh, companies. Uh, we believe that Russia is a great partner. Uh, you know, GSX, Sanofi said today that they have not really had great success with their vaccine. We're willing to help. So basically, Russia wants to partner. We want vaccines to be outside of politics. And frankly, lots of the attacks we see on the Russian vaccine are either very misinformed or very competitive and frankly unethical in nature. They try to undermine confidence in Russian vaccine and Russia doesn't attack other vaccines, obviously, in the same way its vaccine has been attacked. Well, we very much appreciate your time uh, with us uh, on, on the news today, uh, Mr. Kirill Dmitriev. He is the CEO of Russian Direct Investment Fund. At the same time, the world's worst affected nation is on the verge of mass immunization. Medical experts advising the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has voted to endorse Pfizer's vaccine for emergency use. Now, they say the benefits for those aged 16 and above outweighs any risk. The FDA's vaccine chief still needs to sign off on the inoculation before it's rolled out. And that could happen within days. The decision comes as the U.S. logged nearly 6,000 virus deaths in the last 48 hours. The total death toll is now approaching 300,000. Uh, Will Denslow is in New York. Well, uh, what's Will... the plan then uh, once the FDA gives their approval? Well... Essentially, what we're expecting is that once we have the green light, 6.4 million doses will be released across the United States, really kicking off what is expected to be a Herculean effort to get doses across the United States. It's something that could potentially happen within the first 24 hours of that green light being given now. The process has been somewhat um, described by New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo. He says that it's the federal government's responsibility to procure the vaccines as well as uh, handle distribution. It will then be up to the military as well as private companies to try and transport the vaccines across the U.S. Of course, let's not forget that the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine needs to be kept at minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit, so a logistical nightmare that needs to be overcome. We expect the likes of um, the some of the nation's major airlines, including the likes of Delta United, uh, to handle some of that transportation using dry ice on its planes. We then expect the states themselves to handle distribution within them. Here in the state of New York, New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo expects 170,000 New Yorkers to be included in this initial batch of vaccines to be released. We're expecting 72,000 doses right here in New York City. Of course, the city hit so hard by the pandemic. Now, what we are understanding is that New York is hoping that vaccines will start to arrive as early as this weekend. What I'm hearing uh, from staff working at this Brooklyn hospital behind me is that they are being told to get ready for inoculation to begin as early as the start of next week. Uh, the numbers are huge, Will. 330 million across the states. Uh, how long is it anticipated that uh, it will take to vaccinate everyone? Well, Joe, we've heard from a spokesperson from the Department of Health and Human Services. They say they're confident they will have enough COVID-19 vaccines for everyone that wants one by the second quarter of 2021. Of course, the Trump administration has faced some fierce criticism uh, this week on reports and allegations that it didn't follow through with an offer from Pfizer and BioNTech. BioNTech to procure more than the 100 million doses it had immediately agreed to. Now, the Trump administration has said they have relationships and they have deals with six companies in all. They are confident there will be enough vaccines for all that want them. We've also, of course, heard from President-elect Joe Biden. He says that he wants to distribute, he wants to see 100 million doses in arms of Americans within his first 100 days in office.